Hey everybody, it's Blake with Blake's Nature Live, and today I'm going to show you how to do an arching. So what we have here, this variety was um, in Spanish, it's called Old Man. I will put the, the name in Spanish in the video. And what we're going to do is, I want to put Key West variety, that's this one right here. I'm going to stick it on this branch, and an arching gives us a higher success rate on grafting my maize. There's other techniques you can do but I'm gonna show you this one right now. So we prep it in this top piece. I'm gonna use a bag method on another rootstock that's young, that just pushed out. So I'll show you another way to use every bit of this branch. And as you can see, she's uh, doing well and she's in the ground. She grew through the little one gallon. So I'm just gonna leave it here and start adding different varieties. Cause when you only have so much room, why not make a multi-grafted tree? All right, let me prep everything clean our clippers. I like to use 70%. You don't want to use it right away. You want it to dry for like 30 seconds if you can. So reasons why you do this is because some species can be difficult to graft if you don't do everything perfect. But this gives you a higher percent chance of this taking. So what you do is you get your potted tree that's already grafted and you kind of match up where you'd want this to splice into the desired variety that you want on this tree in the next few months. And you have to also make sure you don't clip the wrong area. So you'd be clipping from here when the time comes. So what we do is we kind of match up where we want it at. So I'm gonna pick some of these off. And I can see I want it somewhere in here in that spot. So let's clip these leaves off so we can see what we're doing. Another method I'll show you soon. It's all about making your knife sharp as can be. You can find these at the crafting store. Something simple, you can use a box cutter. You don't have to get, make it too complicated. Okay. Look at that. We are gonna make sure we stick it in the right spot. Because remember, we have pressure and pulling. We wanna make sure it's not too much pressure. We want it just enough to fit right into the groove and hold it in place until this takes. And when it takes, we're gonna cut it from this one and then we'll let this regrow again and we can repeat it or sell this, this grafted tree. Just wiggle into it. Just take your time. Just like that. Perfect. I'm going to cut a little bit more into it. Just take your time. You want to wiggle because you don't want to cut yourself and you don't want to cut too much into this. There we go. It's perfect. Pick one side for the cameo layer. Actually, it fits on both sides, it looks like. Take our rubber band, wrap it. It'll, it'll look perfect. You know, you gotta love grafting. You can manipulate plants what you want it to do. Have multi-grafted trees for small spacing. And I picked the actual right side. So you wanna have that cambium layer contact because this branch was a little skinnier than this one. All right, we're gonna wrap it a few more times. So we'll take that, overlap it, just squeeze it. Squeeze it. You know, it's relaxing. 
It's peaceful for the mind. Yeah, I'm going to put one more through here just to... Here's this one I meant to use. Just to give it some support. Because I cut too much at an angle. But with anything, I've learned you can refix that. Which is not, not the end of the world. Sometimes it happens. And just remember that everything can be fixed. So don't freak out. So let's put one more through here. So I'm going to overlap. You can do this with black sapote. You can do it with mangoes. And also do it with mangoes when the, you know, when this, it's not mango season for grafting. When it's cooler months. When the temps are like in the 70s, uh, 60s and 50s, you can, you can graft mangoes like this and arch it. And they'll take. Let's wrap her a few more times. Hope everybody's doing good. I'm enjoying grafting with you. I always like some company. And don't worry, this part will heal. We just want to make sure this stays tight together. And if you wanted to, you can put a little string through here. If you were to actually bump it, you don't want too much movement. That's why I put so much rubber bands on it. And in about two months, check it. And it should take. I'll put one more support through here. And that's how you do arching. Time for the buddy tape. You can use parafilm or buddy tape. This is a little greenhouse for it so it can heal and the rubber bands holds, holds it together tight so they can join together and be, be as one. I love the bag method too. We're going to try that with Mommy. I've never tried it before. So it'll be a fun journey that you can uh, learn with me and I'm glad to have the company. So we're going to go around one time. We're going to go actually. All right, take that. We're gonna go under. Stretch it one way, like so. Now I'm gonna come back under this way. We're gonna do one more, just to make sure. And I'm gonna get this back side because we worked so hard. We want to make sure that this takes. And when you put the the buddy tape, you gotta kind of squish it into the other one. And it'll join. So now we have sealed it off. We'll keep all the moisture, and I will update you soon. Thank you for watching. We're gonna go and do the bag method with this one. Well, hey, everybody. So this is a young growth stage of Mame. If you would have done it earlier, it would be, the whole stem would be succulent, giving you a higher chance of the graft to take. But we're gonna still graft with this one. There's nothing wrong with it, it's still young. Let's do a cleft graft. It's gonna be a longer graft, that way we get a higher cambium layer contact. So I wanna show you how it's done. Graft. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna keep it long. It's gonna do a long cleft graft. Even though this budwood's fatter, I'm gonna show you how you can use fat budwood on a skinny rootstock. So we're gonna pick one side so that does not look bad at all. So we're gonna hold our finger on there. Get rubber bands. We may have to adjust it when we when we wrap it around. I like to get the bottom going, and I'll double wrap the bottom. All right, so just make sure everything looks good. I see where I have different spots touching. That's what I want. Now, let's start wrapping it. When you wrap around, you want to squeeze a little bit. With this being succulent, we want to keep making sure we move it around. That looks good. 
this one I should have had another rubber band. Should have had two of them put together. So we're gonna stop for a moment and check it. It looks it looks perfect. All right, let's get another rubber band. We're gonna double wrap this one. So I'll show you the two rubber bands you put together. You can take snap it in half. Tie them together. I'm gonna have you a happy tree. You could sell this one, or you could plant it in your yard somewhere. If you're like me, you, need, you really need a greenhouse or a structure to keep it warm in the winter. In a few months this should take if the top starts pushing out let me tell you if in a month this is still green majority of the time it the graph made it this is dead in a few weeks just gotta try again all right so when we get near the end we're gonna want to take this lift it back flip that under boom there you go so now let's put buddy tape around it I like buddy tape, it lasts longer. Parafilm is fine too, it just falls apart from the sun. Which can be an, a good thing too. But depending on what I'm doing, I, I like to use my certain tapes. Remember this is like a greenhouse. It keeps all the moisture in so it can heal. And when the time comes, when we know that it, it made it, we're gonna Take this off. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you take this rubber band off. Don't leave it on there for months. Because what'll happen is your tree will get girdled and all that hard work for nothing. So don't do that to yourself or the plant. I'll keep you updated about this. We'll do an update on the video. A lot of times you wanna use older bud wood, but I wanted to see what new growth but what we'll do is that almost the stage where it's going to harden it wasn't too new so now we've got our bag already put moisture in it now, i always love to put water in the in the beginning because it, i feel like it it gives it a, a straight off shot on humidity in the bag in the structure so now we're gonna take our bamboo sticks and keep moisture in so the leaves will give energy to the rootstock and it'll have a high success take. That's why we're leaving the leaves on. And I could have cut a few leaves off, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I've had a high success rate with black sapotes. I don't have much luck grafting them wrapped up with no leaves on it. I always do the bag method. Uh, I saw a video about Laura doing it and I said, why not try it? So I've been trying on different species and I have a great success rate. So now you can pick any string you want. You just wanna wrap this bottom up, tie her off. We're gonna have fun with it. Always have fun when you graft. The learning experience. We just need it to be tight enough to kind of keep the bag on. And then what we're gonna do is try to push the bag in just a little bit. So when the moisture comes to the top, it pushes back down. And we're gonna keep this in the shade. And every once in a while, we're gonna stick this bottom of this pot in some water, because sometimes it does dry out and you have to keep an eye on it, so it's your responsibility. You, like I said, you don't wanna go through all that work and something happen to it. But there you go. Something easy. See what happens with it, I'll keep an update with you. But this is called the bag method. And we just did a simple cliff graft. There you go. I'll catch you later. Until next time, keep on growing and changing the world.